Hey guys, I'm Cruz. And I'm Ray. And we've been talking about putting others first. And here on the Connect Station, we want to spread God's love around the world. God's love puts others first. And we're going to talk more about that. But first, it's time to <laughs> rehearse, rehearse the, the verse. verse. Today's verse is found in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Say it like this. 1 Peter 2, 24. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross. By his wounds you are healed. Great job. Now, repeat after me. 1 Peter 2, 24. 1 Peter 2, 24. He personally carried our sins he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross. In his body on the cross. By his wounds you are healed. By his wounds you are healed. Awesome, awesome job. Jesus put us first when he died on the cross for us. And now we can live for him. And that means putting others first. Why are there so many buttons? Oh, and this should be able to fix it. Nothing, nothing I got. What is wrong with you? Da, 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 da. So, guess what? Your name is Eugene and you smell like pastels. What? No? Oh, oh well, I'm a bad guesser. Ta-da! You got mail. Who's it from? What's it say? Is it good? Did you win something? It is from a Megan. Megan. And she wants to do a class project about moi. I mean, uh, of course, who else would you do it about? But seriously, I mean, no. There's going to be another girl here on Connect Station? Sounds like it. Yes. Do something useful. I don't know how to use this. She's here. You must be Megan. I'm Alyssa, and this is Mike. Megan, but you already know that. Oh, hi. Uh, I will be with you in a second. I have to finish this because I can't figure out what's happening. Tighten that, and it should work. Hmm? No, no, not that. Um, here, I'll show you. Okay. Wow, thanks. No big deal, I like fixing things. Well, me too. Um, I had to finish my shift here on the hub, but as soon as I'm done, uh, we can get started. Uh, it's okay, Mike, I can cover for you. You guys go ahead. Really? That was nice of you. Yeah, we put each other first here on Connect Station, kind of like a family. Well, you're not related. You work together, that's not a family. Okay, I'll show you the lounge first. Follow me. It's great having another girl on Connect Station, but I think something's going on with Megan. It seems like her heart's really hurting. I hope we can help her. And this is the lounge. If you are nowhere else in the station, this is where you will be. That's a ladder. It leads to the outside of the station, which I would not suggest going to. Here's a cabinet where you cabinet, here's a chair where you chair, and here's a table where you table. So you're stuck on the station. Yeah, but it's awesome. We get to spread the message of what Jesus did for us to all over the world. What did Jesus do for me? What? You don't know? Oh, we gotta change that. One second. I think the Bible says it best, so... Watch this. This is a 66 picks mixed up into one The book's about God, who he is and what he's done It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside It's alive, a prize to hide in your heart and in your mind Old Testaments are set up for the big event When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement It's history, his story, whose story, God's story Let us blow up all the pages, let this show go on. Let us word explode from this video into your life. 
The religious leaders told the governor, Pilate, that Jesus was dangerous and wanted to be king. Pilate asked Jesus, Is this true? I am king, Jesus answered, but not of this world. Jesus is innocent, said Pilate. There's no reason to kill him. I will set him free. But the crowd shouted, Kill him! So Pilate had his soldiers whip Jesus. They forced a thorny crown on his head. Then they laid a wooden cross on his back and led him up a hill. There on that hill, the Roman soldiers nailed Jesus to the cross, hands and feet. Then they raised it high. Jesus hung there between two criminals. Around noon, the sky turned dark. Jesus' friends wept. The religious leaders laughed and said, You saved other people. Why can't you save yourself? Forgive them, Father, said Jesus. When the time came for Jesus to die, he closed his eyes and said, It is finished. He had completed what he had come to do because of his great love. One of Jesus' followers, a man named Joseph, put Jesus' body in a brand new tomb. He rolled a huge stone in front of it. A long, sad Friday was over. Sunday morning, some women went to put burial spices on Jesus' body. They knew a big stone was covering the tomb's entrance and wondered how they would move it. When they arrived, the stone had already been moved. Jesus' body was gone, and there were angels in the tomb. Jesus is alive, the angel said. Go tell his disciples. The women told the disciples, and Peter and John ran to Jesus' tomb to see for themselves. All they found were Jesus' burial cloths. They went back home confused. Later, the disciples were gathered together in a room. They were talking about what had happened when Jesus appeared to them. They were terrified. They thought he was a ghost. Don't worry, said Jesus. See my hands and feet? It's me. Touch me. Go on. You can't touch a ghost, and ghosts don't eat either, but I'm feeling really hungry. So he ate some fish. Then he taught them. The scriptures are clear, he said. The Messiah was supposed to suffer and die, and then be raised from the dead. Now tell the world what you have seen. Let everyone know that their sins can be forgiven if they turn to God. It's possible because of what I have done. Wait, so Jesus died for me? Yeah, he died for everyone. And that changed everything, even me. Changed you? How? Well, I don't have a family. And I used to be so angry. And my heart was so closed and cold that it was hard for anyone to get close to me. You know? I know. I mean, I know how hard that must be. So what changed? Well... One day I heard about what Jesus did for me, and I decided to follow him. He healed my heart and led me here, to Connect Station. Where everyone puts each other first like a family. How nice. Did I say something wrong? No, just forget it. Hey, I'm kind of hungry. Got anything to snack on? Yeah, let's make a sandwich. Uh, what do you want on it? Uh, mayo? Uh, mustard? Actually, I like gummy bears. Me too! Hold just one second. BRB! Mike's guest is asking some important questions. Perhaps God is trying to speak to Megan's heart. It might help when our friends discover today's point. Say it with me. God's love heals your heart. Very good. Perhaps Mike can help Megan discover this point very soon. Hey guys, guess what? Your real name is Anastasia and you enjoy collecting marbles. No. No? Oh well, I'm a bad guesser. <laughs> but a really good asker, she's been asking all kinds of amazing questions. Yeah, like, why put others first anyway? I've always had to look out for number one. 
Yeah, I used to think that putting others first was weird too, but it's actually a really big part of being on the Connect Station crew. Right, because you're all a family. How about you tell us about that assignment? Uh, what's it about? I uh, can't tell you, not oh. yet. Oh, is it about Connect Station, my amazing dance moves? I said I can't tell you. <gasps> the time I sent Mike to Mars. Uh, about how I used to pretend to be a burrito for about a week. His rash. The fact that I got in a fist fight with a gnome. Look! There's no assignment, okay? I lied to you just so I could come here. Just so I could meet my brother. <gasps> you have a brother? Who is he? Is it Clint? Do I know him? I always thought I didn't have any family, but then I found you. Yeah, you found me. I'm your brother? One moment. Continue. Yeah, but it's okay. You have a good thing going here and I don't want to mess up your life, so I'll just go. <laughs> no. Where do you think you're going? I'm leaving. No, you don't just get to leave. And two, there's some place we still need to go. Mademoiselle. Now, finger. This is going to be a little weird, okay? Three, two, one, to the room! And that's how it happens. Don't freak out. Hi, room. Hello, Mike. Do we have a guest? Yeah. This is my sister, Megan. How wonderful. Hello, Megan. Say something. Hello? How can I help you? Well... My whole life, I've been trying to find family, and now I finally found my brother. What's next? What do you mean? Not like you or your oh. friends. I don't know how to follow Jesus. I don't even know how to try. Perhaps it isn't about trying. It's not about what we do. It's about what Jesus did for us. Room, can you show us today's verse? Ready? First Peter. 224. He personally carries our sin in his body on the cross. By his wounds you are healed. <laughs> Dying on the cross must have been so hard for Jesus. Yeah. It was hard, but Jesus didn't let his own feelings get in the way. Jesus lived and died for all people all over the world. It's part of the plan to fix our broken relationship with him. Our relationship with God was broken? Mm hmm Yeah, sometimes I get that. Sometimes I feel broken. So did I. But the cool thing is, God's love heals your heart. What is happening? Mike has discovered the point and connected the dots. God's love heals your heart. Is that true for real? For real. Totes. How? I have a lot to think about. But coming here helped. Thanks. Thanks, room. You are most welcome. Push the button. <laughs> so, how was the room? Well, I asked lots of questions. And what did the room say? So much. But Mike here discovered the point and connected the dots. <gasps> really? Tell me, what's the point? God's love heals your heart. God's love heals your heart. Aw, I love that. Me too, and I want that. Today I learned that I'm not number one, but Jesus is, and I need God's love to heal my heart, like he did yours. And he can, if you ask him to. And guess what? Your real name is Helga? And you're in orbit around Jupiter. No. We could pray with you right now, if you want to. I want to. It's like God's healing my heart all <laughs> over again. Hold my hands. 
and repeat after me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you died on the cross. And rose again to take away our sins. And rose again to take away our sins. And now I want to live for you. And now I want to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yay, salvation! And the heart came together. You go first? Yeah. Okay. I'll put it right. Oh, oh. I'll put it right <laughs> there. Okay. Okay. Right. I'll put mine just above there. Booyah. There we go. It's perfect. Hey guys, Cruz and I were just taping this broken heart back together. Mm hmm. The bandages say God's love. And that's what today's point is all about. Let's say it together. God's, God's love heals, heals your, your heart. heart. Sometimes when our heart gets broken, we feel sad or even angry. And that's when we need to ask God to heal our broken hearts, and He will. Just like when Megan's heart was healed when she chose to follow Jesus. Hey, that's what today's verse is all about. Let's say that together. 1 Peter 2.24 He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross. By his wounds you are healed. This week, let's remember how Jesus lived and died for us. And let's let God's love heal our hearts. Wow, I have a sister. And Megan decided to become a part of God's family by making Jesus the leader of her life. So if you think about it, she's like my sister twice, two times the sister. And you'll find that God's love heals your heart too. And here's a video to show you how. Birthday, did you get some gifts? How about some money? About $100? Oh, uh, please don't. I guess we're writing on the screen there. So there's that $100 we were talking about. Whoops, too many zeros. Far too many zeros there. That should just be a one and two zeros for a hundred. Okay, wait, come back. I'm sorry, do you still have that marker? You could help me teach how we can honor God with the money that we get or earn. All we have to remember is give, save, spend. If we have $100, the first thing we're gonna do is give by taking out a tithe. Tithe is another word for 10%. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that tithing is something we should do to give back to God part of what he's given us. So 10% of $100 is... Don't worry about the math. It's $10. Whenever we get or earn money, we'll be wise and give 10% to the church so they can use those resources to keep helping people. Exactly. I like your draw. Well, hold on. We're not finished. Welcome back. We can't forget about save. Next, we'll take some money and we'll save it. The Bible tells us to be wise with the money God gives us. Saving some of our money for the future is smart. We'll put some of our money aside for a rainy day. That's just another way of saying putting money aside for emergencies. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to spend it on a rainy day. What are you, uh... Oh, I see. Is that a cloud and rain? Yeah. A lightning bolt, two lightning bolts, three bolts. Uh, that's too much lightning. You're losing control here. Okay, are you all right? Ready for the last one? Good, now we can talk about spend. Once we give our tithe and we put some money aside, the rest of the money is ours to spend. But we shouldn't be unwise with our spending money. Before you spend your money, stop and think. Do you want your money to go or do you want your money to grow? So you could buy a bunch of candy. Does that seem wise? You could spend some of it on candy and maybe your brother's birthday present and maybe save the rest for later. Being wise with the money that we have is a great way to honor God. Thanks for helping me out. And don't forget to give, save, spend.